Well, hello, my sweet peeps, my lovelies, my little pretties. What's happening today? Hmm? Are you doing something fun? Hopefully. I hope so. I'm here to ask you to do something very fun today. It's very nice out here. And I told you a little bit about my story yesterday. I'm trying to, uh, you know, catch you up on my story, but I forgot to tell you something. So I had to get back on here. It's really been, it's a little bit chilly. You see this mustard seed behind me? That's what the Lord says. You have to have the faith of a mustard seed. I was going to show you around out here. Well, I'll tell you a little bit more about my story. Okay? Because When my son was born in 1983, like I told you in my chapter 13 of my story, you just have to have the faith of a little tiny mustard seed. So see, right here, like this, very, very little. That's what the Lord says, so never give up, always have hope. And it's very beautiful how you look at it. There's a truck coming over here. So anyway, when he was born, all of a sudden there's a bunch of trucks coming out here. Oh, I came out here so I could try to tell you my story. Now I'm eating a bunch of company. You see, I try to be by myself out here, middle of nowhere. I'll show you this beautiful country out here. And here they come. Driving by FedEx and that dude. Anyway, some guy came out to my van at 3:30 in the morning, trying to bully me and woke me up on purpose, revving up his engine and asked me if I wanted to go have a drink. I was like, "No, get the f out of here." I was totally rude and not very happy. I had to move. So. You know, Lombok. Um, anyway, like I said, when my son was born, uh, look at this mountain. I was sitting on my bed, and my excuse me, I was sitting on my bed, and my mom was in my room, and I saw this. I saw this angel or this lady sitting at the foot of my bed. She was as clear as day to me. So, totally weird. I heard it coming over there. Hold on. He just dumped some trash over there in the bushes. Walk back and back into this vineyard. But anyway, she was sitting on the edge of my bed, like I was saying. And I looked over there and I said, Oh, hello. She was this Indian lady. And she was very beautiful. She had a bit, really big, long braid in the back of her hair. Hold on. Okay. I found a place to set my phone down. That helps a little bit. Trying to find a private place to do your story could be a very challenging prospect. But, like I was saying, the angel on my bed, she was sitting there. She had a really long, long, thick braid of hair. She was an Indian. She was just as clear as my mom was sitting there. And I said, oh, hello. Hello. Where? Who are you? I've never seen you before. She was sitting right on the foot of my bed. My son was just born. September 16, 1983. She said, well, my name is Ian. I-A-N. And I said, well, Ian, what are you doing here? And she said, I came to congratulate you on the birth of your son, Robert. And I said, oh, well, thank you ever so kindly. It was very nice to meet you, Ian, I-A-N. She said, yes, you've known me for a long time. 
I'm your spirit guide. And I said, oh, well, in that case, it's even more, I'm even more grateful to have met you. Thank you so much for coming, congratulating me. This is my mom. Mom, this is Ian. My mom was like, who? And I said, Ian, my spirit guide, she's sitting right here. My mom said, there's nobody sitting there. I don't see anybody. And I said, Mom, she's right here, right in front of you, right? Sitting on the edge of my bed. She said, no, there's nobody there. And I was like flabbergasted. Like, why can't you see her? Why can I see her and you cannot? So anyways, she was there. She introduced herself. I had my son. And the weird thing about it, like I told you in my last episode, is that uh, there's all kinds of people. I came out here so I could talk to you alone, okay? I'm not complaining. I'm just simply saying, isn't there any place where Betty can be alone, Katie Kidman? All right, so anyways, I had my son. And like I told you, I had to have a C-section because of the herpes that the slut gave my husband that I told you about, okay? These things are not easy for me to share with you, but I'm telling you the truth of the story. But the strange thing is about that whole situation is that I never got it. They were giving it to each other. I wasn't the one cheating, and I never got it. So see, God protected me from that slut bag. So those were some things I was thinking about last night. When I was thinking about the story that I just got done telling you and that I left some things out such as Ian and the fact that it was the happiest absolute most miracle thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life I mean for one thing my son was the cutest child that you the cutest little boy you've ever seen in your life he was just adorable the hospital didn't even want to release him to me that's how cute he was and he was like very aware and very intelligent. You could tell that he'd been here before. So they didn't want to give him back to me. I think they wanted to keep him. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Give me my son. So that was quite interesting. They kept him there for a few days, actually. I hope they didn't switch him out on me. But... Uh, he was absolutely adorable gift from God, and I'm ever so grateful for that gift. So Ian, my spirit guide, and my husband, okay, so the sad thing is, and this is why I'm telling my story, because this other woman that was cheating with my husband, first of all, I never got the herpes, like I said. So they were passing it back and forth to each other. And she ended up cheating on him anyway. And um, so, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater. But she knew he was married. And she knew I was pregnant and having a child with him. And we were married. And she continued to see him. I don't understand this kind of behavior. It's very mean and cruel to break up somebody's family by intruding in it. Every day, every day, going to see him sneaking out with him you know for all I know she went to Oregon and stayed somewhere in Oregon every time we went there and she was seeing him behind the bushes I mean it's it's crazy if you don't want to be with me and be married to me and have a family with me then don't lie and don't marry me and don't go through all of these things then he wants to abuse my child okay well as you know if you've heard my first 12 episodes of my story that I've told you, you'll know that I was abused in me as a child, okay? Not because of my mom, but because of the men in her life, because our dad had left us. Because to him, womanizing and alcohol took priority over his children. So when you have children, you give up the right to self-destruct, okay? The child is your responsibility. You're that child's voice. The child cannot speak for itself. It's a fragile little being that God has gifted you 
to take care of. It's not something that you use to get ahead in life for yourself or whatever. No, you're supposed to nourish the child and teach the child and help the child to be feel secure and safe. And so I hear my son, you know, yelling and screaming, crying upstairs. I was downstairs trying to cook dinner. And I'm like, what's going on? And he was throwing a fit. He was about maybe five or six months old. So I go running upstairs to see what's going on. Like, what's going on? Why is he crying? And my husband, his dad, was pushing his head down into the crib, telling him, go to sleep. And he was lifting his head up out of the crib, looking at his dad like, what? And he pushed his head back down, go to sleep. Put his head back up, back down, back up. And I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? He needs to go to sleep. He didn't even talk yet. He was five months old. I was like, he doesn't understand what you're doing. Are you nuts? So I grabbed my son, our son, my son, and I already knew this guy is has anger management problems. And I don't want him beating up on my son like the way I was treated when I was a child. And I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. He's not even a year old yet, and this guy wants to shove his head down into the crib and force him to go to sleep? I mean, how, so when you're cheating on somebody and you have a child and your mind is over there with the other woman, like you're not at home with your wife, your real wife, your real family, your real child, you're over there with her and her three daughters. She had three daughters and a husband that left her. And she was an alcoholic and a drug addict, you know? So they were over there sniffing cocaine or smoking crack and drinking, whatever they were doing together, things that I don't do. So he didn't want to be with me. He wanted to be with the crackhead, with the lady with all the prescription drugs and the alcohol and, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll over at her house. At my house, I was the mother protecting a child and asking you not to smoke pot or your cigarettes or drink around my newborn baby. Can you just manage to do that for the first, like, maybe six months of his life? Can you manage to not, like, go run off and see this slut when you have a newborn child that we should be enjoying and nurturing together? No. The drugs and the alcohol got in the way. Same thing that happened with me, my dad, my family. You see how it just, that's all I knew. So that, that's what I was looking for. That's what I was willing to sell for. But had I known better, like I do now, I would have said no. I would have never married him. He was 10 years older than me, way too old for a 21 year old. And he's 31. He didn't, he wasn't going to church with me. And he lied. First of all, if you just broke up with some other girl named Roberly, then what happened with her and him? You know, it'd be a really good idea to go talk to the ex girlfriend to find out, you know, her side of the story. Because he had beat up his stepdad with a crowbar out in the middle of the desert and almost killed the guy. It had to do with some kind of fight the guy had with his mom, Phyllis, which I think he physically beat up his mom, so he went out there and beat up this guy with a crowbar. But that's not how you handle it. You know, you let law enforcement handle those things. And so he went to jail for that. So if I would have done my research and looked into the whole situation, I would have found out that he had a criminal record and a lot of other things about him I didn't know. If I would have talked to his ex-girlfriend, I probably would have found out how he treated her and how he abused her. So all of these things I learned afterwards. All of these things came to me after I've already been married, barefoot, pregnant, have my son, and this guy abusing my child and me. He loved somebody else. He thought he loved somebody else, but in the end, he realized it was me that he loved and cared about. But he already cheated on me and left me and went off with her and abandoned us. So that's it. You know, it's over. And to him, 
when it's over, that means the war is on. Because he waged all out hell and war against me. The minute we separated, the minute I told him it was over, his mom told me that she'd pay me $10,000 a year or more cash if I stayed with them because we lived next door to them. And I said, no, the guy's a liar, a cheater, he's abusive, he's mean, I don't trust him, and I'm not staying. And I'm taking my son with me. Well, have you ever heard of the War of the Roses? Because wait till you hear this. Wait till you hear what he did next because he used our son as a weapon against me, to hurt me, to go after me, to take him away from me. And when you use your child as a weapon against somebody, guess who pays? Guess who pays? The child pays. You don't pay. The father doesn't pay. The child pays. The child doesn't understand. What happened to mommy and daddy? I just got here. Can't they take care of me? They have so many problems that they have to drink and do drugs and go crazy in front of me and not care for me? I just arrived. I'm a newborn. I need some love. And you got this guy back here that wants to argue and scream and yell at you because you're not his girlfriend. You're his wife. And he'd rather be with her than you. At least that's what his mind is telling him because he wants to go do some drugs and drink and party with her instead of being a father. So listen up and go pray up and be a father, be a family. And you be the one in charge of keeping it that way. You be the one responsible to keep it that way. You be the adult in the room that makes the decision to keep your family together. Okay? Because you can just listen to my story and find out where it goes from here. All hell is about, about to break loose, ladies and gentlemen, and you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned episode 14 this is 13 a episode 14 is coming right up so stay tuned leave me a comment hit the thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and thank you so much for being here listening to my story because i'm telling my story to you and for you to share my experience my wisdom my hope my love and all the joy that's available in the world for those who want it. Ta-ta.